choose you. So many decisions that you have to make. Confusing, overwhelming, scared you'll make a mistake. Second guessing yourself, trying to see what to do. Whatever you decide, be sure to choose you. Life is to be lived, lessons to be learned. Give yourself a little credit, collect what you've earned. Empower yourself, take a mental break too. Wherever you go, be sure to choose you. You matter, you're worth it. What I say is true. In the end, you're gonna win, but you've got to choose you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Choose You Talk Show with your host, Delphine Polk. Thank you all for tuning in. Today's topic is children learn what they live. So I'm going to start with the poem, Children Learn What They Live by Dorothy Law Nolto. If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, he learns to feel guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, he learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, he learns justice. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, he learns to find love in the world. That poem is so, so true. And in these times, we need to understand that children, children really do learn what they live. It's so much going on in the world that we sometimes forget, you know, just that children are being molded. Children learn about strong character when their parents and from their parents and their other adults in their daily lives. So there are things that you need to do to set an example for these children. I mean, be a good example, you know, through your own behaviors and actions. Set and communicate high standards and expectations. Coach them on how to be responsible and kind. And use literature to reinforce the values of strong character. As a parent, we forget that children, they don't, first off, they don't come with a handbook. <laughs> There's no handbook for being a parent. So we tend to make mistakes. But the thing is, allowing your children to know that you are not perfect, but strive and try to be the best parent that you can. We're always teaching our children something by our words or our actions. They learn from seeing, they learn from hearing and overhearing. So be careful what you say. They learn from us, from each other, and from other adults, adults in the community, and sometimes by themselves. And we're talking about young children. I know that most times when teenagers um, become of age, they pick up influences from their friends, from their friends' parents, or what have you. But we're talking about the younger children. Children tend to share the values of their parents about the most important things in life. Our priorities and principles are, and our examples of good behavior can teach children to take the high road when other roads seem to be tempting. Remember that children do not learn the values that make up strong character simply by being told about them. They need to see these, action, these in action. If you want your child to be a philanthropist, uh, you know, one who volunteers, one who gives their time, one who shares their money. They need to see you do this in the formative stages. They need to see you being that person who is a giver, 
being that person who loves everybody, being that person who goes out of their way to be kind and respectable to everybody. In our daily lives, we can show our children that we respect others. We can show them our compassion, concern when others are suffering and our own self-discipline, courage and honesty as we make decisions, especially those difficult decisions. You know, there's a time when they say children should be seen and not heard. But if you involve your children in not your business per se, but in the decisions of things that are going on with you and around you, they're more prone to understand what's going on and why these decisions were made. How we conduct ourselves in our everyday activities can show children that we always try to do our best to serve our families, communities, and even our country. The way that we view our money and material goods also mold our children. If your child sees you only um, with the fine tennis shoes, the fine purses, then they're going to tend to want those things. But if they see that you are open to having comparable items, like me, myself, I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars on a purse, especially if I don't have a thousand dollars in that purse. Well, think about it. If your child sees you with a thousand dollar purse and they know you don't even have a thousand dollars to go in that purse, when they are of age, they're going to be striving to have that thousand dollar purse also. And why not? My mama had. But what sense does it make to have a thousand dollar purse if you don't have a thousand dollars to put in it? And you don't want them to be materialistic. You know, sometimes there's more to being a good person than just having money. If we see our self-worth and the worth of others in terms of cars, homes, furniture, nice clothes, and other possessions, our children are more likely to develop these attitudes as well. Of course, it's important to meet our children's needs. Yes, feed them, clothe them, you provide shelter, provide love for them. But it's important for them to understand the difference between needs and wants. The expensive that jacket that your child has to have may be okay if you can afford it. Finally, we need to be consistent in upholding the values we want our children to respect and not present them with conflicting values. We may tell our children that cheating is wrong, for example, yet brag to a neighbor about not paying our taxes. We may say that rudeness is unacceptable but when you see it on a TV show or see someone else in action, you laugh at it. That's giving them, that's confusing them. That's giving them the a mix up in what they should be receiving. For example, if a father leaves a note on the garbage can and the daughter sees it, She'll ask, Daddy, why are you leaving that note on the garbage can? And he'll, he'll answer, because there's broken glass inside. Now I want the garbage man to get hurt. So I'm just telling them we got broken glass inside. Are they your friends, Daddy? Oh, no, I don't know them, but I still don't want them to get hurt. Not only does that show compassion, but that shows respect. If your child sees you exhibiting these traits, they're more prone to pick them up also. Set high standards and clear expectations. Some parents set low standards for their children or do not hold their children to the standards that they set. Parents may do this because they think they're expecting too much of a child will harm his self-confidence. How? 
However, research shows the opposite. A child builds self-confidence by trying to meet those high standards, even if they have to struggle to do so. Parents don't always make their standards for behavior clear to their children. It's not enough to just mention it once or twice. It's, you're going to have to do a constant reminder. Lucy, I need you to keep your room clean. Lucy, I need you to keep your room clean. Lucy, I need you to keep your room clean. Once Lucy gets the grab of it and keeps her room clean. Oh, Lucy, good job. Oh, I walked in there. Your room was clean. I'm so proud of you. You never really understand how much those little words can mean. I mean, just saying, I'm so proud of you, means so much to children. I mean, I grew up in a household where there was a common, a common statement. I love you. You're beautiful. I'm proud of you. Great job. Keep up the good work. Those were common statements. And you don't realize that everybody's not getting the same things you did in your household when you're working with the outside world. It takes time or experience to find out that everybody doesn't have the same expectations. So I grew up knowing these are things that I wanted for me and myself. So when I had children, these are things I want for my children. Like my boys could not wear their shirts untucked. You had to have your shirt tucked in and a belt on. And your pants could not sag below your waist. They didn't have to be fitted pants, but they could not sag below your waist. You know, it worked fine when they were young, but when they became teenagers, you know, I expected them to keep the same regulations. So if you sag your pants, I'll sag mine. And who wants their mama to come to school with sagging pants? No one. So that worked out easy for us. That was just what worked for me. It's not enough to mention your expectations once or twice. Remember that children grow and change so fast that they easily misunderstood or forget what you've told them. Their understanding of the world is constantly developing and their new minds need to be reminded of what you expect. Like I said, once they get of age, they're going to start hanging with their friends. They're going to want to do what their friends are doing. They're going to want to have what their friends have. But if you set your own guidelines, you don't have to worry about them wavering as much because they'll know this is what my mom or dad expects and this is what I have to do. But make sure you put it in a way that your child understands. Now, there are parents who are friends with their children, not so much me. I do not let my children grow up thinking I was one of their friends because I was not. Now that they are all adult, yes, some of our conversations have changed, but there are still expectations that I make them uphold. There are certain things you're gonna do. There are certain things you're just going to do. Words of caution. Your expectations must be appropriate for your child's age, mental stage, emotional, social, and physical development. You can't expect a three-year-old to sit still for hours or a 13 year old not to worry about how they look. So pay attention to what your child can and can't do. Start there and help them learn the skills they need to move forward. Again, be firm, 
with your expectations. But be gentle in your understanding. Because remember, they're mocking you. They're following you. They're modeling you. They're doing what you do. They're saying what you say. They're thinking how they feel that you think. Man's Child is an organization dedicated to the enlightening of girls from ages 7 to 17 in handling issues with anger, aggression, and bullying. Our mission is to infiltrate schools, churches, and communities with the message of anti-bullying and create awareness about the lasting effects of aggression and bullying. If you are interested or you know a girl from ages 7 to 17 that may be interested and benefit from this program, please contact us at www.sandschild.org. Again, that's www.sandschild.org. Choose you. So many decisions that you have to make. Confusing, overwhelming, scared you'll make a mistake. Second guessing yourself, trying to see what to do. Whatever you decide, be sure to choose you. Life is to be lived, lessons to be learned. Give yourself a little credit, collect what you've earned. Empower yourself, take a mental break too. Wherever you go, be sure to choose you. You matter, you're worth it. What I say is true. In the end, you're gonna win, but you've got to choose you. DP Enterprises, the home of Fix It Dell. Do you need help finding a job or assistance with online production? Do you want a song written? Are you in need of private security? Would you like some personalized poetry or even a 501c3 created? If so, call Fix It Dell at 901 440 03. Remember how you learned to drive or cook? You practiced while someone coached you, reminding you what you were supposed to do until you were able to coach yourself and eventually do it alone. I remember so many times being in the kitchen with my grandma and she's saying, put a pinch of this in there, put a spoon of this, a cup of that. So much so that I know I was exactly, I know exactly what it was. I was 28 years old. My cousins came over to my house for Thanksgiving dinner. And if you know me, I have older boy cousins and they critique you sort of hard. But they all were elated and were telling me how good the food tasted. It tasted just like grandma's. And this and this, oh, grandma, I'm going to be proud of you. I was ecstatic. I was so happy, so proud. I think I called her right then and was like, Grandma, you sleep. Look, my granny Sean came over and they was talking about my food. They said, my food tastes just like yours. I was so happy. That's the coaching. That's the part you want to do. You don't want to beat them down until they don't have any gumption to do anything. You just want to sort of direct them so they'll do the right thing. Children learn values from coaching. They practice different kinds of behavior while you as the coach help them focus their attentions on what is important and fine tune the most important skills. You can support them with praise, encouragement, and gentle reminders. If you do some good, oh my goodness. Oh, good job, I'm so proud of you, way to go. If you do things that are not so good, let's give it another try. Let's not do that next time. Think about what you've done. Let's work on that. You know, growing up, we received a lot of praise in our household. But in adulthood, with all of my siblings are grown and, and everybody's having children now, my mom used to say one thing and it like covered 
everything that went on. I'm so proud of you. She'll even sing and dance for you. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. So if you got the I'm so proud of you, you're winning. So much so, now that my mom is deceased, we still say to one another, I'm so proud of you. If everybody knows that's like the highest accolade you can give because it means you're doing the right thing. You're on the right track. And no matter what, I got your back. So support your children. If you don't coach your child, they'll find coaches elsewhere. You don't want the TV to be your child's coach. You don't want social media to be your child's coach. You don't want their friends or people who don't have their best interests at heart to be their coaches. Just step up to the plate. Don't be afraid. And, you know, you be the reason your child is the, a good person. And sometimes it takes a little more work than others. But if you guide them and train them and work with them, it can happen. You can also use literature. It's a very powerful teaching tool. In fact, people in stories, poems, and plays can influence your children as much as real people. Just think about it. There are stories that you've read that have influenced your life and made you think about things in a whole different manner. I can think of one. The Little Red Hen. And the story was about them baking some bread. Everybody came together to work together to make this bread. And the only way it could get done is you, everybody put their efforts in. And if you didn't give your full effort, then you didn't get the rewards. So it just stuck with me for so long. And it did sort of mold me to know, well, if something's going on, I want to give my bets because I know I want to be in when the reward comes, you know, so it helps them to do what is needed. It says, reading to and with children, encouraging older children to read on their own and talking with children about the books that they read are important ways to help children learn and develop their values, a strong character and good citizenship. Not just reading the books and being done with them. You have to read the books and discuss them. You know, ask questions. How did the people in the story act? Were they good or bad? Were they the heroes or the villains? Why were they the heroes? Why were they the villains? Did the people make good decisions? Why or why not? And how did they make those decisions? What kinds of steps did they take? And what were their obstacles? Like with Superman, everybody knows that kryptonite broke him down. So when children, when my children were young, we'd laugh about things. And if it got to the point where something that they knew they couldn't do or something was going to be too hard for them, they'll tell me, oh, no, ma, that's my kryptonite. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, it, okay, I got you, I got you, the kryptonite. Okay, so I need to know where is your phone booth? You know, if you talk to them on the level they can understand, age appropriate, it's so much easier for everybody involved. Ask questions about the books about who did the hero help? 
Why did the hero help them? Did the story have a good or a bad ending? Was it good for them or who was it bad for or how, how did that happen? You know, how could the story have turned out better? If you could change something in the story, what would you change? And it just depends on how the child is living, what the child is going through. They may change the story for it to be this phenomenal fairy tale, or may have a quick drawn out ending. Choose books that, that you could use for character development. You know, I mean, even if you go to the public library, you can ask them, there's a whole section of children's books that are designated just for that. But in choosing the books, remember these are stories and help them to understand these are just books, these are stories. Although the moral theme of a story, nonfiction book, play, or thing may be clear to us, not so much to children. So you might need to talk to your child to make sure they get the same message out of the story that you were wanting them to get. Be patient and listen carefully to your child's ideas. And just because you finished the story doesn't mean that that story ends in their head. You may have to allow them to finish it out. You may have to allow them the opportunity to get what's in out. I mean, there are stories, Hansel and Gretel for me was one of those stories that just sort of jolted my sister. I was like, mm, mom, I don't like the way that one ended. So what you wanted to happen? I wanted him to not kill kill the lady, but to take her to her family so she can feel loved and he can go back with his family and they love on each other. And then everybody have a big picnic and everybody just get together and they play volleyball while their families are on picnic. Well, as you can tell, one of my characters, one of the characteristics of my life that my mom focused, focused on wholeheartedly was love. I'm a lover. I just, that's just who I am. I'm going to find the little white lining in everything. I'm, I am the extreme optimistic on so much stuff. Sometimes to a flaw. Don't get me wrong. But that's just how I am. If your child's ideas are too far off the mark, talk with them and ask how they got to them. What, what made you come to this? And if they're missing the mark, help them. This is where your coaching, your guidance, and your knowledge comes into play. You may have to reread some of the parts of the story you know, just work with their child. Work with your child. And it's very important that you do so. Because if you don't, they'll look for God in somewhere else. And you know that's not the best for everybody. That's always, not always the best thing. But never forget that even in times like these, there's always a white line and there's always the silver line and there's always the good things to come out of it. And building your child into who you want them to be in this world is up to you. And it's easy to do if you choose you. So I wanted to read about first
And he answered them, Suffer little children, and forbid them not, to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hand upon them, and departed thence. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next time on Choose You Talk Show with me, Delphine Pope, also known as Fix It Dale. Bye-bye, guys.